This is section 3.7, the trace determinant plane, a topic that I'm going to discuss on Tuesday, our last day of class before our exam. Uh, and it's part one of, of a two or three part discussion. The point of the trace determinant plane, and I'll introduce those terms in a minute, is to help us uh, create a picture, a single picture, where we can understand the behavior of our systems and how they change. We've seen basically three types of behaviors, uh, spiral, sinks, sources, and circles. We've seen sinks and saddles and sources. And then uh, the case of uh, the repeated eigenvalues, uh, where everything approaches, solutions either approach or emanate away from a single line. And there are some other special cases uh, where eigenvalues are zero, and they will be included in the picture. But the major cases um, are the most important for us. And uh, we're going to see how we transition from one case to another by looking at what's called the trace determinant plane. So first of all, um, again, we're working with constant coefficient linear systems, uh, A, B, A, B, C, and D are all um, uh, real numbers. The trace of matrix A is the sum of the major diagonal, A plus D, and we denote it with the letter capital T. And the determinant we're very familiar with of um, matrix A is uh, the, the product of the two diagonals, AD and BC, and they're subtracted, and that we denote with a capital D. The eigenvalues of A are found from our characteristic equation, which we've done many times. And uh, we take the determinant of, of this matrix, set it equal to zero, we have our characteristic polynomial. And when we write it in terms of A, B, C, and D, this is what we get. And we identify that the coefficient of the lambda term is nothing more than what we call the trace. And the constant term is, in fact, the determinant. And so our characteristic polynomial for our eigenvalues is none other than lambda squared minus the trace times lambda plus the determinant. Using the quadratic formula, we have minus t, so that's just a t, plus or minus the square root of, of uh, t squared minus 4d over 2. Just um, from this alone, much like we did when we looked at the uh, harmonic oscillator, we can make some general characterizations based upon the value of this um, argument inside of the, the uh, square root sign. So we can begin to classify behaviors quite simply if, if the trace squared minus 4 times the determinant is a negative number, we know we're going to be in a situation where we have complex eigenvalues. We're going to be looking at a spiral sink or a center or a spiral source. If, on the other hand, the argument is positive, if t squared minus 4d down here is bigger than 0, we're going to have real and distinct eigenvalues, and we know that our system, uh, when, when we look at its uh, behavior in its phase portrait, will either be a sink, a saddle, or a source. The transitional situation is when t squared minus 4d equals 0 here, then we just get a single eigenvalue, and that's the case of the repeated eigenvalues. And we know, again, we'll have a source or a sink. On the next page, oh. on the next page, uh, I've taken a picture from our textbook uh, and actually created what we a, a real plane where one axis is the trace axis, the other axis, the vertical axis, is the determinant axis. So every point in this plane would correspond to some specific value of the trace and some specific value of the determinant. And, uh, and if I take our, our three characterizations, when we looked at the argument for the eigenvalues, 
where t squared minus 40 equaled 0, t squared minus 40 was less than 0, and t squared minus 40 was bigger than 0. The equal 0 case is the easiest at first because it gives us a specific relationship that d is equal to t squared over 4. Well, in the trace determinant plane, that's just a parabola. It's this parabola. Uh, t is our independent variable, so it's just like we're graphing y is equal to x squared over 4. Uh, but our variables are t and d. So d is equal to t squared over 4. It turns out that if, if we uh, have a matrix who's, um, that lives on this, where it's traced and determined, it place it somewhere on this curve, we know we'll be in a situation of repeated eigenvalues. If t squared minus 4d was less than 0, that was a situation where we had complex uh, eigenvalues, and um, and rewriting this, uh, we see that this is equivalent to saying that d is always bigger than t squared uh, over 4, which puts us inside or above the parabola. So anytime we're a point that lives inside here, we're going to have a, we're going to be a system, represent a system that has complex eigenvalues, and we're going to refine this further but we'll see that we have, um, when, we're, when we find ourselves in this region, we know that we're either spiraling uh, towards the center, spiraling away from the center, or um, we're just a circle or an ellipse. And finally, the situation where t squared minus 4d was positive, when we got the two real eigenvalues, uh, that is equivalent to saying that d is less than t squared over 4, and we're in this blue region. So anything that's in this blue region will be a situation where we have two distinct real eigenvalues. And again, we'll refine that more as we go along. But I just want to take uh, three examples. So from section 3.4, where we studied complex uh, systems, here's one of our matrix that produced complex eigenvalues. But I'm not going to compute the eigenvalues. I'm going to look at its trace, negative 2 plus negative 2, negative 4 and its determinant, 13, that's a 4, uh, minus a negative 9, plus 9 is 13. And sure enough, 13, uh, d, is bigger than t squared, 16, over 4. So that places us somewhere above this curve. And so this is our, our matrix, just computing its trace and its determinant. And using the trace determinant plane, I know that we have... Um, we're in the complex eigenvalue case. I know that this represents a spiral sink, spiral source, or center. In section 3.2, uh, we worked with um, matrices that had two distinct uh, real eigenvalues, but I'm not going to compute them. I'm going to compute the trace of minus 7 when I add these two together and the determinant of, of 10 and observe that, in this case, the determinant is smaller than t squared over 4, 10 is smaller than 49 over 4. And, of course, it tells me I've got distinct real eigenvalues, but it also tells me I'm in this blue region. And if I'm in this blue region, I know I've got distinct real eigenvalues, and that means I'm either a source, a sink, or a saddle. And we'll clarify those situations. And finally, in example 3, that I took from section 3.5, where we saw repeated eigenvalues. This will be a case of repeated eigenvalues. The trace is negative 4. The determinant is positive 4. And sure enough, d is equal to t squared over 4. Uh, the results of this matrix says that we live on this curve, and so we know we'll be a situation of repeated eigenvalues. Repeated, and of course, real. Uh, in part 2, I'm going to... Um, uh, build upon these and clarify further. Thank you.